Take one. Cinematic history one. Hi, I'm David Lake. I'm the president and founder of One Iron Golf. And today I just want to answer a question that we just get over and over and over again. And I really don't understand the question, to be honest with you. But what the question is, is how do you play the wedges? And I'm saying, now wait a second here. For whatever reason, people have this mystical connotation of wedges. Well, they're not wedges. You start with your 9 iron. Your pitching wedge is actually a 10 iron. Then your gap wedge is 11, sand wedge is 12, lob wedge would be a 13 iron. That's all. You play them exactly like you play any of your iron shots on the golf course. Now, just to give you an idea, um, my lob wedge, when I say lob wedge, that's our 59 degree iron. When I make a full swing, that's an 80 yard club. I get up to my sand wedge, 90 yard club, gap wedge, 100 yard club, pitching wedge, 110, and so forth. All right, but I, you just take a regular swing. Now, all of a sudden, you get into those in-between distances. Well, the only in-between distances you have to worry about is if you're 80 yards and in. Say you're 60 yards in. Well, it's true. You take your lob wedge, and you just don't make a full swing, okay? You take maybe a three-quarter swing with your lob wedge. It'll give you all the distance you need. Everything's fine. There is one thing I do want to mention. Uh, when people talk about wedges, you get about half the golfers love a lob wedge, and half the golfers hate the lob wedge. And there's a reason for that. It's the high loft angle on a lob wedge. When you look down at this at address, you say to yourself, just mentally, there's no way to hit down on that, to have it down your twice. You got to act like a shovel and scoop the ball into the air and the answer is that's exactly what you do not want to do you don't want to try to hit a fat shot or scoop the ball up in the air you want to swing it like every other iron and come down into the ball just depend on the loft angle of the club face to give you that height that you're looking for and there's another thing people will get up to hit a lob or a hit a lob wedge or you maybe have a 50-yard shot. They want to use that half swing or three-quarter. Or they're trying to get over the top of a trap to hit the grain. They're thinking to themselves, oh, i got to get this up in the air. So they look down, and they're looking up, and they try to hit it up in the air. There again, all you're doing there is scooping it. And if you try to do that, half the time you're going to blade the ball, and it's going to shoot off 50 yards past the green. You don't want to do it. You always want to come down. So you never aim your shot up here. You always aim your shot straight down your target line. Always. Never try to lift the ball in the air. I had a real good friend of mine, probably the biggest hitter I've ever played with. His pitching wedge was his 150-yard club, and this guy could drill the ball. Well, I built him a lob wedge. Well, he'd been playing our irons for years, but he never had a lob wedge. So I said, you got to try one. So I built him one. He goes out to his golf league. He comes back, and he is extremely mad, frustrated. And he said, Dave, I couldn't hit that thing over 60 yards. I was, I hate that club. And I told him the same thing I'm telling you. Yeah, because you're looking down and trying to scoop the ball. It doesn't work. Hit it, hit downward on it, just like you do with every iron in your set, and it'll be different. So the next day he played around the golf, came back, and it was just the opposite. He was saying that his lob wedge was now his favorite club in the bag. He could nail it. Of course, <laughs> this guy was hitting his lob wedge like 120 yards, so what can you do? But ever since then, he loved it. But the whole trick, don't try to scoop it, don't lift it, hit down on it. Now, there's one other thing about the wedges. Here's our sand wedge, our 55 degree. A uh, sand wedge from a, any brand out there, they'll have a, a bounce angle on the sole of the club. That's this part right here. You can see it's kind of curved. Uh, they will have a bounce angle on that club of like 15, 16 degrees, which means there's an actual big lump there, or it's a flange that goes up like this. Now that's great. If you're hitting out of the sand, it's that flange, that bounce angle, that keeps the club from digging into, you know, fine sand. But on the other hand, if you're trying to hit a shot from a close cut fairway, You'll blade that shot every time. And the reason being is when the club sits on the ground level, here's this big bounce angle sticking way down here. 
and the leading edge of the club is actually sitting about a half an inch above the turf. So you're going to hit the middle of the ball every time. It's almost impossible to hit from a close cut fairway with a sand wedge until you get ours. Uh, I wanted every one of our clubs to be primarily a fairway club. So when I designed our irons, I designed a three degree bounce angle into every iron in the set. Now three degree is minimal. In a regular set of irons, a three iron might start off with a two degree bounce angle. Then they get higher and higher. Then you get down to the pitching wedge nine iron. They might have an eight degree bounce angle. And then they get higher, like I say, through the sandwich. Even the lob wedge will typically have maybe a 14 degree uh, bounce angle on it, which is very high. And you, you get that same problem trying to hit from a close cut fairway. I designed all of our irons with an exact three degree bounce angle, which is enough to keep the club from, you know, hitting into the turf and getting that fat shot and so forth. Uh, but at the same time, you can hit them great from a close cut fairway. You can hit them from any kind of a lie. On our sand wedge, I did increase it to six degree bounce angle. Now, I also widen the sole a little bit, which also acts as a kind of a slide when you're going through the sand. So the club will not dig into the sand. Uh, it will produce an excellent shot every time. But by the same token, you can be on the closest cut fairway and hit beautiful iron shots into the green. As a matter of fact, part of my testing for that, for coming up with that six degree bounce angle, is I hit shots off of a cement driveway and hit perfect shots off of it. Try that with a regular sand wedge. It, it flatly doesn't work. But anyway, those are the differences between the wedges. Uh, I will caution you. Well, I, I will mention a couple things. Like I say, the important thing, lob wedge, don't try to scoop the ball. Just hit down like you normally would, and everything will be fine. You'll hit a great shot every time. Is there a time when you might want to come up underneath the ball and scoop it? Yeah, there probably are, but they're very, very rare. If uh, you've got a very short distance to the, you know, into the green and you've got a big trap, you might want to try to scoop it. I don't advise it, but I mean, that's up to you. It's with practice. And by the way, when I'm talking about uh, distances, like I say, I get within 80 yards of, uh, of the pin and I will hit the shot, but I will hit, you know, a, a different strength. I won't swing quite as hard. And that's just something you, you're going to get through practice. It's the only way you're going to develop that. Personally, I live right beside a golf course of which I'm a member, and I'll go out there in the evening when there's nobody there, and I'll take four or five golf balls, and I'll just walk around, throw them up by the green, throw them over here, throw them over there, and I will hit shots into that green. Now, without knowing what the yardage is within that 80-yard range, all of a sudden, just mentally, you get a very good feel. If you practice that shot, you're going to have a very, very good feel for those. And you can become a magician with that club, an absolute magician. Okay, let's talk about uh, your chip shots. Personally, when I chip the ball, I only use my gap wedge, which is a 51 degree. I only use that. Why? Because I know how hard to swing it. I know how far the ball is going to go in the air. I know how far it's going to roll out when it hits the green. There again, that just comes from practice, absolute practice. Uh, Always, by the way, when you're hitting a chip shot or a pitch shot, you never want to try to hit in front of the green or around it. You want to hit on the green and then let the ball roll out. And the reason for that is if I hit the green, it's a nice smooth surface. I know what that ball is going to do. If I hit a little bit in front of the green or, say, on the fringe, I have no idea what that ball is going to do. It, it might be hit the side of a hill, bounce this way. It might hit a little pebble, bounce that way. It could hit a little hole or a ball mark just in front of the green. So you always want to hit the green and then let it roll out. Uh, like I say, in every case, you would just take your normal swing. There is one exception. One exception. This is something you're going to have to practice. And you can practice this out in your backyard. If you've got a ball and it's buried, let me find a place that's just kind of buried here, some taller grass. Uh, well, there we go. It's kind of buried. That's good. Um, it been even buried more than that. If you try to swing a regular swing through that, what's going to happen? You're going to hit this grass. You're going to have two inches of grass between the ball and the club face, and that club's going to stop. The ball's not going to go anywhere. So if you want to get it out of a deep, chunky grass like that, there's one way to do it. It's called a gravity shot. And realistically, this is the only specialty shot you ever have to learn with wedges. 
And basically what the gravity shot is, you've got the ball, you put the club down, right behind, right in the center of your stance, the club, right down, and you press it down so you can actually feel the ground underneath. Once you do that, you just lift the club up in here. I'll just hit a little short one here. But you just lift the club and let it fall. That's all you got to do. Uh, if it's a longer one, say you got uh, 10 yards that you're trying to hit out of this crap. And bear in mind, when you're hitting out of the rough like this, you're going to have to swing a little harder. But you just take a little more of a swing. Instead of just going like this and letting it drop, take a little swing and let it drop. The club will typically hit, if you got thick rough, it'll, the club head will stop right there. But this is after it's made contact and the ball's going that way. Don't use a forward hand position. Don't put more weight on your left side like some of these instructions say. Don't just use some, don't do all that crap. It's just very simple. You have your club in the center, you take your swing. It's that simple. Anyway, those are the wedges. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the vinegar. The vinegar. Hope you enjoyed the video. You might think it's vinegar, but I tell you, it's not. I hope you enjoyed the video. And just remember, good wedge play, single length iron, it's just the common sense of better golf. Oh, I'm sorry, one other thing. I have to wrap this, this video up for two reasons. Number one, I've told you everything I wanted to tell you. But number two, it's cocktail time. We'll see you later. <laughs>